guys welcome to my channel my name is Maya Alexis I'm a senior computer science major with two AWS certifications and today I'll be talking to you about creating a study plan when you're studying for the AWS cloud practitioner or the solutions architect associate exam so I'm making this video because AWS is huge. There's a whole bunch of different tests you can take. There's a whole bunch of course material out there to study. It's just like very overwhelming at times. And if I didn't get help from my internships with getting started with this, I wouldn't know where to start. So today I'm going to help you start. The first thing is figuring out, are you going to take the cloud practitioner or the AWS solutions architect exam? I'm not going to go into much detail about that one because you can watch my previous video. I'll link that right here or so and see what the differences is between them and how some people start off with the cloud practitioner. Some people skip straight into the solutions architect without really knowing what's going on. So up to you. Second thing is to look on the AWS website to see what exactly you need to study for. I'll do a quick tutorial to show you how to get to the AWS site and to see what white pages and what they request that you study for the certain tests you're taking. I'm just starting off with the Google Home screen and all I'm going to do is type in AWS certification. So in your first result, you should see prepare for your AWS dot, dot, dot. So you're going to click that. So you got all this stuff. You're going to scroll down, scroll down. And if you are taking the cloud practitioner, you will go under foundational level AWS certification. Then it would show you, let's see, AWS white papers, and it'll tell you the three different ones that they want you to read. Even though there is a whole list, a whole bunch of different ones that you can read, you could even read white papers on each individual service, but these are the three main ones you should focus on. Then you can also read about what actually is on it and you can download these different PDFs and it has a couple of sample questions on it. I think it's only about like eight or less than 10. So it's not really that useful, but um, you can download the exam guide and it'll literally show you the different things that will be on the test. Same thing goes for if you're taking any associate level, literally all of them are on there. You can click what white pages are listed. It tells you you need the well architect framework the different services that you need to focus on. Same thing, you could go here, see the exam guide, sample questions, and boom, you know what you need to be studying for. The third thing is to figure out what your learning style is. I'm personally a mixture of a visual, auditory, and read writer, but I never read it back after I write it. It's very weird, but you know, you could be a hands-on learner. You could be a visual learner. You could be auditory, whatever one is for you. That's most important because you may not be able to just read a bunch of white pages to be able to pass. Some other person out there can, someone else out there can just watch videos and understand other people can't. So important to learn what your learning style is before you start studying for this. After you figure out what your learning style is, my suggestion, if you have absolutely no experience with AWS, don't know any of the services, is to get on a Cloud Guru, use their free trial, and watch their videos on whichever exam you're taking. The next thing would be to read the material that's out there. For example, white pages, or I personally use Dojo's cheat sheets. And if you're a little funny with like reading and it could help you, I do this sometimes with stuff. I download an application and it'll read it to me as I'm reading it. So I'm hearing it in my head as I'm reading it too, and I'm reading it faster and it kind of helps me understand things a little more. If you're visual, some of the diagrams on the A Cloud Guru videos and in the Dojo cheat sheets are very good. But if you're like me, you might want to like draw it out yourself so you can like figure out different things, make sure you connect things together in your head. That may work for you, may not work for everybody else. You could also make tables and graphs and things like that in the Dojo cheat sheets. Cheat sheets. They have different comparison sheets that you could use or you can make your own or write it out 
and regurgitate what you just learned from it. So completely up to you, but I think that's a good idea too. The next thing is taking practice tests on Udemy. So after you go through the practice test, make sure you review your answers. They do very, very detailed answers of what is correct and what's also incorrect. So I would definitely read up on those, especially the ones I got wrong. Then go back and add those to my notes or draw out a diagram or draw out a table or just do whatever you can to help you remember what's the different services, what they do, who they are, you know. These next tips are for hands-on and reader or writer type people. Even though you're not a visual person, if you've never seen any services in AWS, I would suggest watching all of the videos first before you jump into reading and stuff. It may be able to help you. One thing I want to point out with the iCloud Guru tutorials is they do do hands-on demonstrations with some of the services that you could possibly watch if you wanted to. I don't really have any interest in watching hands-on tutorials. I just wanted to watch the content videos, but that may help you remember different services. So I suggest that. As you're watching the videos, make sure you take notes on the different services and stuff or things that stand out to you or stuff they say may be on the exam. Don't get too caught up in the tutorials or trying to do the things on your own because at the end of the day, neither one of the cloud practitioner or the solution art architect is quizzing you on actually doing the different services. They're worried more about what the service is, what it does, what it can connect with, how much it costs, those types of things. So don't spend too much time trying to actually do them yourself. Look at the white pages that they recommend for the test you're studying for and looking at Dojo's cheat sheets and taking notes on it or making flashcards. A good thing that I would do is I would learn the material then I would teach it back to myself or like I would look at my notes and be like, hmm, what is an S3 bucket or what is an EC2 instance? And then I would have to tell myself and then after I would tell myself the answer, I would go check my notes or check the white pages to make sure I was correct. After that, I definitely recommend doing the practice tests on Udemy and as I said with the visual learners, doing the tests then going back and checking to see what you got wrong and what you got right and reading the detailed explanations of why you got it wrong and why the other answers are wrong. The most important thing about studying for either one of the tests is to remember, do not try to memorize these things. You need to actually know these by heart, like what is the services, what they do, how much they cost, all that type of stuff. You need to know that, not just try to quickly memorize it so you can pass your test because that won't help you. And it definitely won't help you if you're trying to go the next step and take a test that's higher than the ones that you're looking at right now. Also, if you're following behind the tutorials that are on a Cloud Guru and you're doing it yourself, you may want to be very careful and make sure you're doing free tier options because you're going to be hurt at the end of the month when you get your bill and you see that you ran up the tab because you were messing with stuff that you didn't know was extremely expensive for a person, you know, because these these corporate businesses, they have money, they can they can do this type of stuff. But just be careful when it comes to like, oh, how much time should I give myself? Me personally, I'm a very lazy procrastinator when it comes to studying for tests. So to hold myself accountable, as soon as I started studying and I felt like I was getting a hang of it, I booked my test for two weeks after I started to feel comfortable. So I had time because if I have a test that's far away, I'm going to be like, well, I'm not studying anytime soon. But since I knew my test was coming up and time is passing fast, especially with the pandemic going on, I was making sure I have to study this, this and this every day to make sure that I'm prepared and ready for my test in two weeks. And if you do that and then the week comes or the day comes and you don't feel like you're ready, you can always cancel your exam and reschedule it. But I will warn you that when you do cancel it and get your refund, that refund money won't be directly into your account that day. So you're losing like $100, $150. And then you would have to spend more if you wanted to book it that same day you canceled your previous exam. So that is the end of this video. I hope this was helpful to you and that you create a great study plan for yourself. I will leave all of the different course material that I used in the description below and good luck on your tests.